Hello, everybody. Hope uh, you're all doing well. So, we are back. And as you can see, we're moving on to the next game in the Grisaya series. Not a side story, an actual game. The actual next game. The sequel to Fruit of Grisaya. The Labyrinth of Grisaya. I think uh, it's been enough time, and why is my bitrate going weird? That's like half of what it should be. You gotta be fucking kidding me right now. Whatever, just work through it. Work through it, we'll see what happens. Whatever, it's fine. <laughs> a million things going on. <clears throat> anyway. So yeah, we're just gonna be we're gonna be starting the next Versailles game. Uh yeah, sorry, I'm just kind of a little blah right now. I want to be really excited, but just kind of everything's all over the place. Just mm. anyway, yeah. <laughs> Starting Grisaya, it's been long enough since we finished Fruit of Grisaya and Leisure of Grisaya. So let's start the next mainline game. Let's just do it. <laughs> what is going to happen in this? Um, not 100% sure, to be perfectly honest. I don't know. Obviously, I know nothing. Okay, I didn't know anything about Grisaya, Fruit of Grisaya going into it. You think I know anything about its sequel? No. So, yeah, this is going to be another one of those long-haul ones. It'll probably take me a good year to finally actually finish it. So, yeah, mark your calendars. October 25th of 2024, maybe I'll be done Labyrinth of Versailles. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Okay, select a scenario. Huh. Not what I was expecting. Not what I was expecting at all, guys. Um. Huh. I don't know where to go from here. So I guess, okay, Labyrinth has its own route, obviously. I gotta figure this here, and I guess it's about Yuji's past. But it also has after stories for the other girls' routes? From the first game? Okay. Now that begs the question, what do I want to do? Do I want to do after stories? Or do I want to delve right into Yuji's past? I gotta check Discord quick. To see if Mochi ever brought it up at all. In our DMs. And which I should start with or not. It's Mochi's the man. Mochi's the man. Okay, I think if he did bring it up, it might have just been in our actual Twitter. <laughs> hmm. Okay, literally, okay, never mind. He just told me just the actual order that to play just the games in general in. <laughs> it's like, shit. Okay. So, okay, so, hmm. 
knowing you, you want to do Michiru first. Hey, Nick, how's it going? Um, you might not be wrong. I, I mean, yeah. What are, what are these? What I'm struggling with really right now is, do I start Labyrinth with the after stories? Whatever the short stories are, or go into the its actual main story. Which would I? Which do I do? <laughs> I did not expect this kind of layout. Do I do after stories, short stories, or the or the main? You wouldn't have to have any recommendations, would you, Nick? <laughs> that was not a recommendation. <laughs> Throwing up was not a recommendation. Let's see if I can DM Mochi real quick. I don't know. Yuji, Amane, or Yuma... <sighs> you're, you're basically saying do the after stories first and... or <sighs> Damn it! Is You're torn too. Either at, You can't decide whether to do after stories first or the main story. Ugh. I'm assuming these are post-fruit. And not, like, post-labyrinth. <laughs> Finally, you motherfucker, you arrived! How you doing, Mochi? And how you doing, Goros? How's it going? Hmm. Yeah. Is it matter really after for after food? All right. <laughs> I'm on lunch for work. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it can be done either way. Or okay. You're saying do main first, then do the after stories. <laughs> and you're at the computer lab. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, since it doesn't matter which I do first, I'm going to leave it to a coin flip. See what we get. So, uh... I think this is like a coin from Turkey, possibly. I don't know. So, uh, heads do main, tails after stories first. So let's see. It's heads. All right, so we're doing main story first. So, after stories for the after. <laughs> so, okay. Let's see what we got. Ah, 
Ow. That hurts. If that was too left for you guys, let me know. I will turn it down. Get fucked, headphones users. God damn it. Whatever. That was way too loud? Okay. Was it about the same level? We we'll drop the BGM to about there. Let's try that again. Is that any better at all? Once we're done with this, I vote Yumiko first for after story-wise, since we did her last. That's actually a good idea, Nick. That's actually a really good idea. We could do the after stories in the reverse order I did the fruit routes. So we start with Yumiko, but end off with uh, Michiru. We're not done this for a long time. Yeah, true. Knowing me, I'm gonna take a long while. Maybe... Yeah. Or maybe sometimes I'll kind of uh, take breaks from the main story and go into one of the uh, after stories. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see how I'm feeling. Slightly better? Okay. It might just be this part that's obnoxiously loud. July 2012. Japan Coast Guard patrol vessel discovered a small ship of unknown origin in waters near Yanaguni, northern, uh, west, westernmost of y Yayama Islands. The ship ignored three warnings to cut its engine and managed to shake off the Coast Guard vessel after a two-hour chase. An attempt to pursue using the patrol boat's onboard helicopter was discontinued by order of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for fear of provoking neighboring nations. Ending any hope of interception. Photographers and video of uh, photographs and videos of the incident taken in a private capacity by a Coast Guard officer on a patrol on the patrol boat. Immediately passed from a PC with a satellite connection to the first division of Ichigaya's Central Intelligence and Research Department. Interesting. There were five people on that small, unidentified vessel. The images were of poor quality, having been taken with a camera of an outdated cellular phone. But a thorough analysis establishes with 51% certainty that one of those five individuals was Heath Oslo. Who? Well, I mean, we're probably going to find out. So I haven't gotten quiet, worn out for work? No worries, buddy. No worries. I get it. I get the grind and how it, yeah, how, how it really does drain you. I get it, man. No worries. Heath Oslo. The name itself is an alias. His real name and place of birth are unknown. Estimated age, early 40s. Previously a mercenary with the French Foreign Legion, he was discharged on suspicion of having stabbed a superior officer to death with a knife. After fleeing to Switzerland, he proceeded to make his way from battleground to battleground, resurfacing in Afghanistan and Yugoslavia. At present, numerous countries regard him as a war profiteer and terrorist involved in the active provocation of conflict. Although he's believed to have multiple cover identities, Oslo currently presents himself to the world as the, as the strategic advisor to a next-generation weapon development project funded jointly by several defense technology enterprises. At the time of this incident, there was no positive proof that the man photographed by the Coast Guard officer was in fact Heath Oslo. 
A previous assassination of an individual misidentified as Heath Oslo had saddled the Japanese government with some 4 billion yen in indemnities. Neither Ichigaya nor Akasaka were eager to repeat that mistake. So long as Oslo's identity could not be confirmed beyond the shadow of a doubt, they refused to authorize even an approach with small arms, much less a forcible attempt to physically capture the ship. Tokyo's orders emphasized the possibility that this was a demonstration by nationalist activists from a neighboring country. And in strict compliance with the Geneva Convention, they confined the Coast Guard to a conservative plan. Pursue where possible, and prevent any attempt to land. But while this passive approach carried the day, some speculated that Oslo's appearance might, might be connected to a rumored top-secret program for the development of high-reliability alternative nuclear warheads. Holy fuck! We're really just kind of going for it. We're just going into this hardball shit. America, which optimistically assumed Japan's nuclear allergy was a thing of the past, and was slow to take appropriate measures. The Japanese Ministry of Foreign Affairs, which avoided anything troublesome like the plague, had hated bowing its head unless it was absolutely necessary. As the result of two obstent ostensible allies attempting to resolve everything without alerting each other, a single terrorist was allowed to remain at large. Alright, new opening. I recognize those silhouettes anywhere. Alright, what's gonna take me by surprise with these CGs I'll see with zero context? Sakuki, why are you in a maid uniform? Oh my. There's my girl. <laughs> what the fuck? Kazuki! She's in it? Oh, so that's what Asako looks like. Okay. Interesting. Oh god, it's the bus. Dude, I'm so ready for you to go through this saga. This is a huge thing for my channel. It means a lot to be very sentimental. Hey man, I'm glad I found this series. Fucking tuna fish, man! Alright! Alright! Good fuck. Hm. Oh, I'm a good man. Ningen not a mammoth dead dozer. Ningen go mining none of the creta. And we back to our regular schedule program. Tai Tero Senso to you, Nano Nisenga to Zita Kono Knide. Save its hate to stay with us. I don't know if I told you, but I had already read Fruit before I streamed it. When I read through Labyrinth and Eden, those are my first time. Re okay. Well, this is my first time reaction to literally this entire fucking series. And this time, I won't lose all the VODs. Well, I mean, I only lost a few. And they're just common routes, so it's not like I missed a lot of story. 
that I can't look back on. Thankfully. Thankfully, there isn't too much story in Common Route. It's just fun, good times. <笑>人間はそれだけの存在じゃない。人間には愛がある。清らかな海水のごとく透き通った愛がある。お前こそ you're feeding a shark meat. <笑>気仙沼かった。な、なに。トロが打ち消された。だと次はこちらの攻撃だ。くらい。ダブル気仙沼かった。Huh. Hey, can I have General Spare Ribs back? <laughs> Sachi, what the fuck is wrong? Okay, guys. I'm gonna be real with you. As much as I detest Machina. He just hearing that fucking voice again, honestly, it just- it, it made me smile. I'm back in the world of Grisaya. <laughs> okay, I'm back with these characters again. And that le legitimately made me smile. <laughs> I, I actually am. I may not be like super high energy excited, but I'm excited. I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to be back in this world as much as it scares and confuses me. Sachi, you good? You good, girl. Oh no, she has the hots for a shark. <laughs> Was established in common, she has a shark fetish. <laughs> she, yes, she did make the shark pouch, that is correct. And was ready to make another one. <laughs> oh my god. あ、うーん。なんか愛とか分かりやすいキーワード出てるし。きっと戦いに傷ついたサメマンを人間の女の子が看病して愛に目覚める的な展開になるのは分かってるのよ。And would love nothing more than to be that woman that nurses shark man back to health. Am I right? でも今は敵。頑張れマグロマン。サメマンなんかに負けちゃダメなのよ。Oh my god. <laughs> 
God damn, Sachi! You went for the throat! Immediately! Holy hell! <laughs> っていうか無駄って言うな。頑張ってるよ。私頑張ってるよ。マグロとかサメよりも私を応援しなさいよ、あんたらも。それは自業自得でしょ。そんなあなたの勉強に付き合わされている私の身にもなってほしいわね。
Oh, please don't tell me she calls us Papa. Please don't call us Daddy. No, I don't want more of that. I was okay with Onichan. I cringe at Daddy. Oh. Uh. Don't actually tell me, though. Don't actually tell me. Let, let the cringe come naturally the minute she utters those words. Not saying anything else, okay. <laughs> okay, that'll work for you, so, okay. Michiru, what would your stand-in be? ソコは九百四十メートル毎秒とするじゃんけ。ソコをかける秒をかける最新シータマイナス二分の一かける重力加速度が九点八メートル毎秒かける時間の事情。地球の自転やら大気密度やダストなんかを無視した場合、よほど
And I wouldn't be surprised if they reverted somewhat to how they were back in Fruit, just because, you know, that's the characters we grew to know and really like a lot. I mean, that happens a lot in general. They'll revert some character development to keep them as what everyone immediately thinks of them as. Eh, whatever, still. Still, this is Josiah, okay? It, something's gonna surprise me, big time. I know that. But I'm still gonna enjoy it. <laughs> I'm already enjoying it still. <laughs> I mean, we got Michiru getting picked on immediately. Y Yumiko just being, you know, a smooth operator as always with the, you know, indifference. <laughs> Makina just being Makina. Again, I'm not 100% clear on detail. Been a long time since I've read this, so I remember only general outlines, so I'm half speculating and things myself. That's fine. We love speculation. We absolutely love speculation here. So many benkyo sudden of a yana no? Damena no yo, Yumi chan. Gay o shee yo to motara. Mazu a kakuzato no as yo, boys a city kana no yosa. Makina. Stop. Once again, the voice acting is top notch. I love it. So, yeah. Also, I nearly forgot. I can't look at Yumiko the same way after Leisure Grisaya. I can't. I can't look at her the same way. Woof woof. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot see her the same way after she just... Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Nearly became dog. And then liked the feel of the handcuffs. Good lord. Nothing wrong with that, but man, I can't see you the same way as I saw you from the end of your own route. <laughs> ヒは一つたったの <laughs> I hope you were telling the truth. Oh, good. She's upgraded from the pumpkin to the Okara. <laughs> だから食べやすいようにドーナツにしたんじゃない。低カロリーで高タンパク、補助甘味料として、かぼちゃとさつまいもを生地に練り込んであるし、無敵なおやつなんだよ。Of <laughs> course she added some pumpkin in there too. You, you can't you can't go without that pumpkin. おいしいし、何も問題はないわ。実際スオさんはすごいと思う。かぼちゃとダイズは若いうちから食べておいた方がいいって、うちのお母さんが言ってたのよね。10年後、鏡の中の自分の顔に大きな差が出るんだって。ああ、確かに甘ねえのママ、めっちゃ若い
皆さんお茶が入りましたよそしてマキちゃんにはミルクねおいや冷たいミルクとドーナツこれでもう負ける気がしねえな It's October. It's illegal to not think of a pumpkin. <laughs> yes, yes, we all agree. Baron is an idiot. Hi, Nevermore. How's it going? What <laughs> それにしてもいっぱい作ったわね。食べきれるの ？Well, there's one more person in this dorm you could feed them to. <笑>チョコチップ入りだの、ドライフルーツ入りだのって、いろいろ試してたらすごい量になっちゃったのよね。<笑>気持ちはするし、ユージが帰ってきたら食べるだろうし、全部食べちゃわなくてもいいわよ。<笑> Except you're allergic to it. Ah, yeah. Damn pumpkins. あ、ねえそういえばヨージは今日は朝から見かけないけどあいつどこ行ったのよ Probably each guy a job. おなんだよちょっと姿が見えないぐらいでもう寂しくなっちゃったのかべ別にそういう意味で聞いたんじゃないしただなんか美味しいものがあるのにヨージいないからどこ行ったのかなってそんだけだし。Okay, okay, the pseudo Cinderay is doing a little better. I'm alright, a little tired, how are you? Also tired. <laughs> But alright. Damn, Sachi. Huh? Again, I'm assuming something to do with Ichigaya or he's talking to JB. Oh! Okay, they just know about Ichigaya now. Alright. All right. Okay. Yeah, this is a this is a weird like what if what if alternate timeline after fruit. Okay. Makina would probably know about Ichigaya after the stuff that happens in her route, and so would Yumiko. She would also know at least. I have an inkling about Ichigaya. I think she did even beforehand. The other three, though, I don't think in any in any of the routes Ichigaya ever came up in conversation because he just you know he kept that shit under wraps, and they didn't really have any presence at all in those three routes. Huh. All right, so I guess just he kind of revealed it all to them after the fact. Somehow got permission to do so, or he totally got permission. k a z a m i s a n o o t o d e k i t o w a t a s t a c h i n a z u k a r i s h i r a n o t o k o r o d e k a z a m i s a n i s h k a d e k i n a i k y o n a s t e i r i n i c h i g a i n a i t o k a k s h i n s t e o r i m a s k a z a m i k u n c h i k a j i k a s h o s h i n o t a m e n i s h a n a i s h i k e n o k e r u t e i t e t a s h i そのための予備サモンじゃないかしらおおそういやなんか最近ずっと部屋にこもってへん私と遊んでくれないと思ってたら<笑>そのための資料を作ってたのね OK そういうことだから別に心配はいらないわよスオさんうん別に心配はしてないよユージなら何があっても大丈夫だろうし私は少し心配です。いえ、すごく心配です。心配すぎて気が変になりそうです。それはいくらなんでも大げさでしょう。<笑>実はこの小峰幸、多忙を極める風見さんに
微力ながらも何か貢献できないものかと思い立ちまして That's what you haven't seen in years. One of the old bar review brushes used to come with. Oh, okay, cool. That's why I gave warning about timeline. It's just weird. Yeah, it is a little weird, but.、Eh. Again, it's a sequel to a visual novel. It's gonna be a little weird and jank, especially if it had multiple endings. Which, which ending is canon? Yes. That's the answer in the sequel. Which ending was canon? Yes. <laughs> Though I guess Yuji didn't lose an arm this time. <laughs> like in Machina's. Spoilers for Fruita Grisaya, by the way. We're just going to be spouting Fruita Grisaya spoilers as we play through this, obviously. So, yeah. Just. That's all I can say. We're going to be spouting out any kind of spoilers from the last game. Because, I mean, I got to compare and contrast. されどインチキメイドたるこの小峰幸にできることなどこもりきりで荒れたお部屋のお掃除ぐらいしか思いつかず先ほど風見さんのお部屋のお掃除をしていたのですがゴミ箱の中からとんでもないものを見つけてしまいましたどうしましょう What did you find in his garbage? 何ガビガビのパンツでも見つけたのいえこれです。紙くずじゃんかさこれは裁断機にかけられた書類のクズですそしてこの裁断クズを再現したのがこちらになります Sachi, you're terrifying <laughs> To be fair, when playing sequel spoilers the previous game is fair game True, 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 very, very true 裁断機にかけられた書類を再現ってすごいのか<laughs> バカなのかなになに風見裕二の過去に関する自己報告書えー、そそれって勝手に見ちゃダメなやつじゃないのセーブしないんだからね。And of course, I changed the menu、uh, character voice to be Michiru because, you know, best girl. There, I'm at least gonna put our first save in there. Wait. シナリオ進行度の確認なんてしないんだからね。はあ。ニート。Okay, that actually tells you how much of the route you got done. I'll take that. That's actually going to be very, very handy for figuring out where the fuck I am in the route. I'm going to、uh, lurk for a while. No worry. Game. Oh, sorry, wrong voice. Kono Komine Sachi, Ukatsunimo, Sai Sai Sagio Tuni, Sono Tai Hani Meo Toshte Shimai Masta. Kazami San no Sozet Nakako, Nusumi Mite Shimai, Sono Jisekini Tai Kirez, Kyo Hansha of Yaso to you, Kontan. I'm going down, I'm taking you all with me. That's Sachi right now. Story of Mina no Tameni. みんなは一人のためにとてもいい言葉ですね。That's not what that shit means! いやいやいやいやいや、それはダメでしょう見ちゃダメでしょう皆さん興味がないようでしたら、再び裁断機にかけて焼却処分しますが、<笑>構いませんかあ、いや、それは、えっと、<笑>ねえ、私の方を見て同意を求めないでくれるそりゃあユミコはユージのこといろいろ調べて知ってるかもしれないけど<笑>考えてみれば私たちってユージの昔のことほとんど知らされてないのよね私はお兄ちゃんからいろいろ聞いてるけど詳しいことは聞いてないのよ OK good she calls him お兄ちゃん she doesn't fucking call him Papa and Daddy, just Oni Chan is fine. I'm fine with Oni Chan. I'll take it. Sate Mina san, do s h i m a s k a Meanwhile, blissfully ignorant of the conversation taking place in the Mihama Academy dormitory, I was sitting in the Ichigaya mess hall. 
choking down an oily, dressing-drenched salad with the expression of a man being force-fed raw, force raw sewage. There it is, with his very specific similes. And metaphors. Yeah, simile is with like or like or as. I come out as a mother's only messy or cool yet on a cousin you. Guahara senpai. It's good to see you again. The man who called out to me was Kuahara Ichiro, a first lieutenant lieutenant. Also known as the Dai Makarov Connection. <laughs> oh my god, fucking Dai Makarov. <laughs> Back when I was training to become a contracted employee after finishing my stint as a foreign capital guest, he offered me some ex extraordinary support. Look. Interrogations are the only reason they call me in, you know. Major Harudera. So, 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 no, Hitoda. Omae no Kako no Shirio to Koka Hu or Dase to Yoreta. Sorry for the hassle. Come on, sir. Shkashi. Guess I've gotten settled down enough to start thinking about the future. Something like that, at least. I'm sorry, but... <laughs> if you're bored, come work with us. You get paid less. We all look like uh, you know, horrifying rock monsters. The, it's, yeah, that, that, those are the positives, by the way. Those are the positives of the job. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be sure to keep the offer in mind. Oh, I'm well aware that I've turned into something of a coward. Maybe it's just a product of the spectacularly languid life I've been living lately. The way I've immersed myself in the routine of Mihama Academy, like a deadbeat lounging in a lukewarm bath. It used to be I didn't care too much whether I lived or died. But these days, I'm less comfortable with the idea of bleeding out in a ditch somewhere. Is that seriously all it takes to change a person's behavior to this extent? Is it really alright for me to keep going like this? I gave up on most of the things normal people take for granted. The devotion that resembled resignation, or maybe mas masochism... I anchored myself to the words, National Defense. Someone who's decided to throw everything away for the sake of a country doesn't really belong in a place like Mihama. It's just too peaceful. The longer I soak myself in it, the harder it gets to pull the trigger. Same facility, a different floor. Office of Harudera Yuria, Section Chief in the 2nd Division of the Ministry of Defense's Central Intelligence and Research Department. By the time the cicadas were beginning to sing in earnest, there was no one except JB in the room, and no sound from inside but the quiet clicking of her keyboard. <laughs> There's good old JB. Raccoon! <laughs> 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 
知ってますよそれで何のご用件ですかいやいや先日の話だけどね親父ですか先日の話で全てが通じると思わないでくださいあれだよほら風見裕二の昇進に関する資料の提出だよ君ああその件ですか現在詳細な資料を作成中です、まあ、君は時間をかけすぎだよそういう性格なのですから仕方がありませんそれに<笑>彼女からの要求は可能な限り詳細にとのことですが。し。し。あ。The professor in the basement deemed the documents previously provided as an examination of Yuji's possible promotion as inadequate and demanded a new and more detailed inquiry. She was already aware of the general, superficial outline contained in the personnel records. Her request was for information that would flesh out the inner Kazumi Yuji in greater detail. Kazumi Yuji no shoshin ni kanste, sai shu teki na handan wa kanojo ga suru kara ne. Kanojo ga hoshii to yu naro yoi suru shika nai sa. Jinji ma de kanojo ga tori shikiru to yu koto desu ka? Ima. この国の防衛は事実上彼女が仕切っているんだよ。それは君も知っているだろう。Seriously, who the fuck is this professor? そのためにも彼女に読ませる資料が必要になる。それこそ、おいたちから何から何まで、すべてをまとめた資料がね。そのために、今日は風見裕二本人を召喚してあります。この後、本人の手による報告書を受け取り、それを元にした質疑を予定しています。どいやあ、結構。私は彼に嫌われているからね。<笑>私はいない方が信仰が滑らかになるだろう。君にま。そうですか。では速やかにご退室を。<笑>今風見裕二を呼びます。Oh, you're not going to? Get the fuck out. Right now. <笑><笑>よろしく頼むよ。<笑>一応嫌われているという自覚はあるのね。This is Kazumi. お任せ。私の部屋に来なさい。Yeah, I'll be right there. さてと、ユージが来るまでの間に、事前資料に軽く目を通しておきますか In the year that the first portable MD player in the world was put on the market, Kazumi Yuji was born in a hospital in Atsugi, Kanagawa Prefecture, the fourth member of a family that included his parents and an elder sister. His father, Kazumi Ryoji, was the second son of a farmer from Chiba. Yuji's paternal grandparents had already passed away by the time of his birth. Alright. Getting, finally getting some. Yuji backstory. Yuji history. We didn't get like much of that in fruit, so I I am actually intrigued by this. Ryoji was a man severely lacking in judgment. Years before, an acquaint an acquaintance from his school days coaxed him into selling the land left to him by his father to finance the construction of a resort condominium condominium. A greedy and foolish gamble. When the business failed, Ryoji was forced to sell off the newly built resort to recoup his enormous debts. For all intents and purposes, his old friend had swindled him out of the condo. By picking a bitter fight with his elder brother over their father's inheritance, Ryoji was able to obtain a one time settlement of 4.2 million yen in exchange for complete estrangement from his family. Damn! We got a few hints. Yeah, that's we got a few hints, but we're not. We have we never, didn't get like it was just his history splayed out on the table for us. We got the histories of the girls. This is so. This is solely focused on Yuji now, which is nice. We get to know more about our protagonist, <laughs> other than trying to piece this shit together. Also, four point two million yen. That's. 
Uh, knock two zeros off of that. That's... $42,000. So we got a settlement of $42,000. He's completely estranged from his family now. Good job, Ryoji. An art history major at university, he used this money as capital to open a small antique art shop. But in substance, he made his living as a middleman, arranging shady but technically legal contributions to corrupt politicians. In sum, it's easy to surmise that he was a petty man, cowardly but suffering from delusions of grandeur, arrogant to the weak and servile to the strong. You need an old exchange rate to get the clear numbers. True, true. I, I I just always follow the old standby. It at least gives you a decent approximation. Just knock two zeros off the the end of the no, of the yen price, and that'll be about what it is in dollars, Canadian or uh, American. It, it's just a good quick thing. And at least for Canada, it's more or less right right now. The yen isn't doing too good, so it's actually going in our favor for if we want to import shit. Let's see, what is it at right now? CAD to JPY. Alright, one Canadian dollar right now is 108.78 yen. That is fucking phenomenal. That is... Oh, God. End of September, it was... Like, ten, 110. Damn. That's the best it's been in years. Holy shit. Yeah, we're on a high right now. Like, it's slowly but surely. It's been going up, and I'm fucking, like, happy about that. Like, I am super stoked. <laughs> Alright, now let's see what the USD to CAD is at the moment. Okay. One American dollar is 150.16 yen. That is phenomenal. That is fucking amazing. That is absolutely fucking amazing. <laughs> so yeah, any Canadians or Americans, if you want to order shit from Japan and pay the price in yen, now's the time. I would take advantage of it now, because that shit can dip. Who knows when? Like, a literally God-given notice. It was just all of a sudden, like, nah, actually, it's only worth, like, 90 yen. <laughs> Buy it now while you can. <laughs> Hell, if you're going to Japan and want to get the currency from your bank ahead of time, this would also be the time to do it. Just one dollar gets you 150 uh, yen? Yeah, do it. Yuji's mother, Kazumi Satoko, had, like her husband, lost her parents at a young age. After their death in an accident, Satoko was passed around between reluctant relatives before becoming fully independent at the age of 18. Although she enrolled in a vocational fashion school, the pressures of her tuition and living expenses forced her to work at night and it wasn't long before she found herself a dropout neck deep in the entertaining trade. Okay. Yeah, the, you get the, yeah, everyone knows what the code for that is. Toko got to know Kazumi Ryoji when a Yakuza and habitual customer brought him to her club. Eventually, she became pregnant, quit her job as a hostess, and was en entered into Ryoji's family register. Not only was she a weak-willed woman with a tendency to grow dependent on others, Satoko also had a difficult time trusting in their affection. On the whole, she was an unfortunate individual. Perhaps even pitiable. Please refer to file number two for information concerning Ryoji and Satoko's first child, Kazumi Kazuki. This is a metamorphosis shit! <laughs> hey Jen, how's it going? <laughs> We're we're starting to get we're starting to find out about Yuji's life. 
Checked historical rates should be uh, $1 to 120 yen at the time. At least he had his legal dispute at the end of Yuji's birth. Okay. Still, that's pretty good. Eh, that's, uh, yeah. Still, that's decent, I'd say. It's alright. I mean, it's okay for us going to yen, but not so great for Japanese going to dollars. <laughs> Kazumi Yuji was born two years after his sister. An outline of his earliest years follows. In comparison to Kazuki, who was regarded as a remarkable prodigy, Yuji was born an ordinary child without any particular talents. He lived in the shadow of his sister and was neglected as a result. His parents were disappointed with such a mediocre follow-up to their genius firstborn, and they frequently admonished their son to stay out of his sister's way. As a result of this negative family environment, Yuji grew up carefully watching the expressions on his parents' faces, contributing to strong perception and observational skills. Refer to the attached report for further details on Kazumi Yuji. Yeah, he did not have a good childhood. The only bright spot being his sister, and, uh, well, we know how it happened to her. <laughs> it just all went downhill even more from there. At a glance, it was a perfectly normal family. There was no religious influence on the household. Despite indirect connections to certain politicians, nothing suggests involvement in any ideological radical factions. Ideologically radical factions. I feel Yuji, I too, was born without talents. I too was born without talents. <laughs> Downhill, I... I didn't even intend to make that a joke. That was completely unintentional. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> but at the time, Kazumi Ryoji was concealing a debt of some 32 million yen from his fa- Holy shit, dude. $320,000? How do you hide $320,000 in debt? Jesus Christ. Under a mattress, off. <laughs> That's how he hides his debt. Just under the mattress. Where do we hide the extra cash? Under the mattress. Debts? Under the mattress. Um, unmentionables for uh, nighttime encounters? Under the mattress. Though there's definitely better places to put those. But if you don't have those places, the mattress. <laughs> the mattress is just a black hole that just encompasses everything. It'll hide everything. Even you, if, uh, you managed to position yourself just right. <laughs> what are unmentionables? You know, the good old marital aids. Those. <laughs> Hide the marital aids underneath the mattress so the kids don't find it. <laughs> I mean, hiding debt is not hard. Debt is money that you don't have. Oh, now you've gone and mentioned them. Okay, the the mentioned mention the the mentioned unmentionables. They're they're paradoxical. I created a paradox, guys. This is mainly composed of liabilities from his earlier failures and the prior investment of enrolling his daughter in a famous private school. His repayment came to about 160,000 yen a month. Not an overwhelming amount, but a serious strain on an income largely composed of the intermedi intermediary fees he earned facilitating political donations. This was the only obvious point of concern. File number two, concerning Kazumi Kazuki. Kazumi Yuji's elder sister, Kazumi Kazuki, first showed a glimpse of her talents at the age of four. 
Kazuki's father, officially working as an antique dealer, often took paintings and other works home for safekeeping, exposing her to a wide range of art from a young age. One day, she sat down in front of a famous painting and began to reproduce it with pastels in her sketchbook. All at the age of four? Damn. When her father glanced at that scribble, he was astonished by Kazuki's... Oh my god, this is obviously one I've seen before. God damn it. Uh, precociously. Yes, yeah, precocious. Yeah, precociously vivid use of color. What? Wow. Brain fart there for a second. <laughs> Do I get a gold star, Jen? <laughs> I mean, I brain farted that one. I'm also tired from work, <laughs> so I'll use that as an excuse for today. Today and possibly today only. We'll see. <laughs> On a whim, he gave her oil painting materials to play with. At first, Kazuki simply messed around with a thick paint as if it were clay. But at the age of six, she was beginning to produce work that could legitimately be called paintings. No, gold stars are reserved for those who don't make excuses. Oh. Damn it, I'll do better. <laughs> and at the age of eight, she won a special prize at the, dis at the District Hydrangea Exhibit Painting Contest. This was the highest possible award, as age restrictions meant her entry was placed in the children's division. Oh, okay. Realizing that Kazuki was uncommonly gifted, her parents had her tested and learned that her IQ was an astonishing 180. Yeah, definitely high. At the age of 8, she had the IQ of a genius. Given that the test was calibrated to her age, this wasn't an impossible score by any means, but it was far, far above the average. Her parents argued that Kazuki should skip grades to pursue more challenging lessons, but testimony suggests that Kazuki herself wanted to live as a normal child to the degree possible. Kazumi Kazuki could do Anything she put her mind to better to better than most. Learned to read. <laughs> Still, she was particularly gifted as an artist. It's said that a painting she completed at the age of 10 was appraised in the millions of yen. Damn. A family of four, blessed with a daughter who possessed rare talents. Not such an unusual situation in and of itself. On a superficial level, this was still an ordinary family. A father who spent his days eagerly counting unhatched chickens, interested only in sliding beads along the abacus in his head to count the profits his daughter would one day produce. Oh, yay, child exploitation. We, we love that. Totally. <laughs> A mother... The goose who thought her entire existence validated by one shining golden egg, convinced that her daughter's birth had finally secured her a stable place in the world. And a walking inferiority complex of a son, ashamed by the thought of looking stupid next to his sister, with no means of self-defense except to avoid her. Oh yeah, the, the perfect fucking ordinary family, right? <laughs> That was Kazumi Yuji. There, we got a brief rundown of his life. <clears throat> Pardon me, Kazumi Yuji, reporting in. Okay, now you can drop the bullshit etiquette, because you're just going to talk shit to her, I know it. I'll pass. Just had a cup downstairs. So, that's 
<laughs> I wrote down my entire history for you in on literal sheets of paper. Enjoy. <laughs> you motherfucker. You're, you're like someone that's going to pay for their purchases with just a, a literal wheelbarrow of pennies. Nothing says I can't. No, technically the law says. And also, business can also just say, no, we will not accept that as, you know, a legal tender for payment. They can do that. Because no one wants, like, $400 in fucking pennies. Especially because they don't exist here in Canada anymore. If you could get $400 in pennies here in Canada right now, I'd be impressed. I would legitimately just be impressed. Where the fuck did you find that many goddamn pennies? It's easier to dispose of paper. Shredded all the rough drafts with a cutting machine. <笑>いや、いい、almost too late. Sachi pieced it together and made a brand new copy. Now she's like sharing with the girls. Look at Yuji's past. Pennies was made into a clip. FYI, may need to cut it down yourself. I'm on mobile, so it won't let me. Oh, okay. Okie doke. No worries, no worries. I know, Twitch Mobile is total ass. Like, complete and utter dog shit of an app to do anything on. They really need to revamp that fucker. <laughs> Maybe that should have been one of the big things they announced at TwitchCon. We're fixing the app, we're making it a good app. <laughs> also, we, now we you won't be, you know, paying different prices for bits and subs on it compared to on PC. Which, that's just a bunch of bullshit. The prices are different on the- are actually more on mobile than they are on PC. That is like a massive load of shit. So yeah, anyone on mobile, don't buy- don't, don't get subs or- Buy bits on mobile. You're paying too much. Don't ever do it. Just don't. So wait till you're at a PC. <clears throat> yeah, fine. Will do. So what now? I think I included pretty much everything in the documents. Is there something more you want to know? So, yeah. Is that really relevant to my promotion? Okay. So even emotions toward family members are within the sphere of investigation? Fine. But it's really just like I send the reports. As a kid, I went through a phase where I deliberately avoided my ridiculously talented big sister. When I failed, they'd say, And you call yourself Kazumi's brother? And when, every once in a while, I succeeded... Compliments were always something like, just what I'd expect from Kazumi's brother. I mean, I definitely wasn't that talented, but I didn't feel like I was depressingly incompetent either. Guess you could say I was a pretty normal kid. Just not in the same league as my genius sister. 
Being compared to Kazuki, no matter what I did, got very irritating after a while. It's probably only natural that I started avoiding her. Honestly, it was my only real way of protecting myself. Is it sad that I consistently notice that super high achieving sisters seem to have the worst younger brothers? Huh. That's actually a... That's an interesting trend. But you never see it the other way around. A high-achieving brother with a worse sister? It's always a high-achieving older sister with a average brother? Weird. It's gotta be some kind of... Someone's had to have looked into this just to see if it's actually, you know... A real trend and not just constant coincidence. I got my bully to stop bullying me because he was acting up and I told him I felt sorry for his parents. They had to deal with him after probably expecting another insert system. Damn! Just being savage as fuck. <laughs> Well, I mean, you got your bully to stop being a bully to you, but damn. You just go for the fucking throat, jeez. Gender roles in society, different expectations. People can say whatever they want, but reality is what it is. When I swing, I often miss, but yo, that shot was fire! <laughs> <laughs> when I hit, it's for like 120 damage, but I got like a 10% accuracy. <laughs> I'm gonna miss most shots, but when I connect, oh boy, is it gonna connect. <laughs> Crack the butcher. And I'm still muted. Nice. Fuck. Uh. Um. Tab, right? Yeah. Okay. The worthless baby brother. The scrap left over from a genius. When people taunted me with those words or whispered them behind my back, I never had a retort. Thank God I remember Tab for the history. Mainly because I was perfectly aware that it was more or less true. <laughs> oh Lord. I feel terrible, Nichan. I always look like an idiot when I'm next to you. I think those words hurt Kazuki pretty deeply. Even so, she didn't hold it against me. She did her best to interact with me like any sister would. Catch? Catch what? One day, my sister called out to me with a slightly called out me with a slightly dingy pink rubber ball in her hand. She must have picked it up somewhere on a whim. Thinking back on it now, it was probably a considerate gesture on her part. Not even my own dad spent any time playing with me. I guess she was trying to fill that void. I was strongly left-handed back then. But at first, I deliberately tossed the ball with my right. 
どうして左手を使わないのジェンダーロールズ・ハウ・ウィア・ソーシャル・ソーシャル・ソーシャル・ソーシャル・ソーシャル・ソーシャル・ソーシャル・ソーシャル・ソーシャル・ソーシャル・ソーシャル・ソーシャル・ソーシャル・ソーシャル・ソーシャル・ソーシャル・ソーシャル・ソーシャル・ソーシャル・ソーシャル・ソーシャル・ソー You're the one who told me to use my right arm more, Nichan. So, I'm a little bit of a problem. 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 That it all depends on, it all depends on the where you're from, I guess. I don't, I don't know. It also feels like a very old mindset nowadays. That's very much an old one. You would, and this is why I like to to have at Grisaya. We get these kind of, we get a little bit of discussion going. I like I like the little discussions. Save しないんだからね。Okay, my percentage. Scenario sin code. Okay, come on. Why? Why isn't the percentage upgraded yet? Come on. I'm clearly part way through the route. I like that there's completion though. Unless this is counting like. Your percentage is what CGs you got, then that's a bunch of bullshit. The stream's just got boys versus girls. Oh lord. That is true. Yeah, true, true. There are no universal societal norms. There might be a few similar. Some. Actually, so, there might actually be a few universal ones, but there's gonna be a lot of differences between each. Literally each country. Hell, there can be differences between each city. It's, it's, society is a weird thing. Very strange thing. God damn it, we're getting, getting a potentially good discussion here, and I have to go shortly. <laughs> Why now of all times? <laughs> ah! Let's not get too political here. That's all I'm just gonna say. Don't get. Let's not get too too. Uh, yeah. Cause that's just a whole other can of. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Fair. Yep. We'll just leave it at that then. Yeah. We're not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's health. The yeah, yeah, just yeah. We'll just we'll drop. We'll drop for now. We'll drop it. Just drop it in general. <laughs> okay. Of course, I threw more strongly and accurately once I switched to my dominant arm. The sister rewarded me with gentle words of praise. You think? Why? Okay. If you say so. 
I didn't know what meaning there was to any of that. But if Kazuki said so, I assumed it was just the way the world worked. When I did eventually learn to throw a ball skillfully with, with either hand, my sister complimented me again. It's not like I was looking to become a pro baseball player or anything, so sometimes I did wonder why she was so eager to praise me about that sort of thing. Because the rest of your family is shit, and she's trying to be a positive influence. Still, I think she helped me see something of my own potential. If I did want to play baseball, with hard work, it wouldn't be impossible. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was completely worthless, but my sister complimented me. I couldn't beat her at anything at all, but she still praised me. Okay. Don't give up before you try. But of course, Kazuki was an exception to her own rules. No matter what she picked up, in no time at all, she'd be producing respectable results. That's why they call her a genius, after all. To quote, um, uh, the Falcon in the Winter's in uh, you know, the movie, the Captain America Winter Soldier. Hey, I just do what he does slower. <laughs> I like that. I I like the quote. I do what he does just slower. <laughs> Really? ええ。大切なのは諦めないこと。諦めの悪いことがいつかきっとあなたの武器になる。どんなに困難な状況にあっても、周りの人間が全て諦めて絶望していたとしても、あなただけはそれでもと立ち上がれる男でいなさい。
I opened the door to Kazuki's studio. Taking the landscape from the wall, I ripped it to pieces, then left without a word. <laughs> my father's angry shouts were a familiar part of my everyday life. That didn't particularly bother me. Still, the sorrowful look on my sister's face as she gathered up the scraps of my painting made my heart ache with regret. I ignored my sister's apology by pretending to sleep. My family was a defective structure balanced precari precariously on a foundation of sand. And the one pillar keeping the whole thing upright wasn't my father, our sad excuse for a breadwinner. It was my big sister. Kazuki had made a name for herself in the fine art world as a promising prodigy, but once she reached 12 years of age, that talent began to show signs of waning. Oh, great. Her normal pace of three paintings a month fell to a single canvas every three months. And even the ones she finished lacked the delicate touches which had lent her earlier work the power to enthrall. My parents declared it was nothing more than a temporary slump, and their expectations for Kazuki didn't fade. Still, it was clear that many in the art world were beginning to question if the golden egg was already losing its luster. It's not uncommon to hear of prodigies who end up being perfectly ordinary people after 20, but this dramatically premature decline soon began to unsettle our parents. My father, for whom Kazuki's slump was a grave crisis, eventually began to interrogate her about it. My sister's answer to that question was very simple. Almost too simple. My father interpreted it as a claim that Kazuki's aesthetic sense, or talent, had deteriorated with age. But in reality, my sister had simply learned how to hold back. The childish hard work she'd once poured into everything was pointless, even counterproductive. Trying too hard only increased the number of people who envied her. So now, she was deliberately giving mediocrity a try. <laughs> when we were alone, Kazuki, Kazuki explained all of this to me quite frankly. <laughs> Just having the title of child genius bestowed on you is enough to push your peers away. My big sister never put that much importance on connecting with others as a child, and over the last few years, her thinking seemed to have changed slightly. Specifically, she was now trying to become something like a normal person. Oh, you mean like how Yuji's currently now trying to be a normal person? Well, I guess he's kind of succeeded. Kinda? Yeah, he's more or less succeeded. I mean, he went through an entire fucking game, so yeah, he's definitely succeeded at least trying to be a normal person. I was doing homework after school one evening when Kazuki came home carrying a massive stack of manga in her arms. Oh, damn. <laughs> Fucking manga. Let's go. My big sister was starting to dabble in anything and everything. Even then, I knew most adults thought manga was just brain-rotting trash. Oh, you fuckers. Are you kidding me? This is like 20... This is like mid-2010s. How the fuck... Manga is not brain-rotting trash. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of 
crap manga out there, but still a lot of good ones made before and after that, so fuck you! And it's popular at school wasn't gonna fly as an excuse for reading it. Well, like early 2000s. I thought it said he was born in 2012. Or did I misread entirely everything? I might have misread everything, actually. And maybe it, it probably, the game probably takes place in 2012. Regardless, there was still some... St still, early 2000s. Still some good manga. But they'll get mad at me if I read manga. My parents had never bought me any comic magazines. 1992 is the year of the first MD player. Oh, right. Where the hell did I get 2012? What a, okay, yeah. Fair enough. Look at Bear not paying attention. Ooh, what else is new? <laughs> so we're on the cusp of... We're, 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 we're basically on the cusp of the year 2000, more or less. Or in it, whatever. Oh, yeah, she's eight, so... Yeah, it's like the year 2000. I think she's 8. No, she's 12. So 2010. It's 2002. It's 2002. That's it. 2002. There had been an incident before when we dropped by a bookstore after going out to dinner as a family. While my father browsed through the art section, I wandered over to the manga aisle and started reading where I stood. Eventually, Mom came along and asked if I wanted the book. I need to was you. Oh, right, okay, so... Okay, yeah, she's two years older than him, so she was born in 1990, and she's tw Okay, okay. You're making me math right now, and I don't want to math. I don't want to math. It would still be 2002! Or am I just being... F no. No, 2004. Right, no. I can't math right now, guys. I'm sorry. I can't... I can't math. Uh. <laughs> oh, God, I math too much today already. I had to count stuff and input numbers, okay? My... my, my Okay, she's born 1990. She's 12. Add 10, uh, okay, add 10 to that. We get 2,000. Add the 2. two okay, it's 2,002 now. Oh, good fuck. <laughs> uh, how to math? <laughs> Not like this. <laughs> If he was IRL, you would be four years old, older than me. One year for me. Don't apologize. Math is a made-up concept by big maths. Trademark. <laughs> God. Are you really gonna believe what big number tells you about addition? <laughs> <laughs> ah, at least I could share the dumbassery with all of you. <laughs> at least you spend your time counting so you so you're used to mathing. I waste my time trying to learn Japanese. I wouldn't say it's a waste of time. Oh, big numbers is much better. <laughs> Learning another language is definitely not a waste of time. It's just very hard and time-consuming, that's all. But I wouldn't say it's a waste of time. Okay, it's impressive to know a second language. I don't know a second language. I... Fuck, I know, like... First year high school French, and even then, not that well. It's 
third. Oh, your third language. Okay, that's even more... Look at you being a show-off. <laughs> you and your third... Knowing a third language... Trying to learn a third language. <laughs> and here I am struggling with my first, you know, first language. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know my native plus English. Still. You know two languages, you're working on learning a third. That is impressive. It honestly is very impressive, and I would... I, I, it's, I would not call it a waste of time. Japanese is about four months in work. Okay. Nerd. <laughs> oh my god. Coming from the guy who's sitting in his computer lab, presumably at school? <laughs> Can you call us the nerd? <laughs> I thoughtlessly answered... Yeah, but my father vehemently objected. He said reading that garbage would turn me into an idiot. He definitely, he'll definitely yell at me again. <laughs> well, I mean, we all know the old standby. I can't really judge anyone because... Yes, yes, we all agree. Baron is an idiot. <laughs> okay, that sound alert is there for a reason. What the reason is, I don't know anymore. <laughs> it's just there. So, <laughs> ファイナル。もしかしたらその漫画好きの子と共通の話題ができる。それってとても重要なことなのよ。あなたが思っている以上に大切なの。このことは10年後も友達でいるだろうなって人間を探すのに、漫画とかゲームって意外と便利なツールだし、大人が考えるほどもだじゃない。It's part of why I have my best friends for basically life. We love video games. It's a very common topic. We like anime. We like movies. We like a lot of things. It helped kind of, you know, bridge that gap to us becoming the literal best friends. I miss my friends. <laughs> I miss my friends from my hometown. Oh, I'll, I'll eventually try to figure a way to go down and see them. If not before the new year, at least sometime in the new year. I will fucking make my way. I will make that six hour trip. I want to see my friends, damn it. <laughs> and I'll make the other six hour trip for you too, Jen. <laughs> Do not worry, I will, have, I will make another trip out. <laughs> I just gotta figure it out. I gotta, I gotta figure out, uh, traveling plans are so difficult at the moment. Everything is so weirdly remote and disconnected. We need that fucking train to get back running ASAP. At least until I eventually get my actual license so I can drive myself. I mean, I got step one, so I can drive a vehicle, just not alone. <laughs> so, that's step one. Step two is getting the license to drive alone. <laughs> step three, obviously, being the get the full license so I don't have to worry about being tested again until... Renewal time. And then step four is have a vehicle. <laughs> uh... yeah, I know this is a weird place to stop, but 
yeah, I'm just gonna stop here for tonight. Just because tonight's a little bit of a wonky day. <sighs> so hey, yeah, that's that was a good little start at least. Yeah, nice little beginning in there into Labyrinth of Grisaya. I, I, I never that that start screen kind of confused me a little bit just because I can choose either to do this main story or the after stories of the Fruit of Grisaya routes. Day to you or evening? It is evening for me. It is 8 p.m. Now, let's see what we got on the schedule for the rest of the week. Oh, look at that. More Grisaya tomorrow <laughs> at the same time. And also Friday, I will do a makeup stream for some more Grisaya after canceling the uh, Monday and Tuesday streams. So, two more days of Grisaya, and then what's happening next week? Well, it's the last week of the month. Well, last half week of the month, but good enough. Next week is Variety Week. So I'll be trying to put some stuff together for that. But that is... That's for later. <laughs> and we actually got a decent amount of people right now. Let's see. Is there anybody on I can send you guys to? Uh, not on my follow list. Um, 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 I highly doubt anyone else is playing this game. Let's see, let's see. It's probably literally only just me. Oh, hey, look at that. I'm right. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, we just won't raid for tonight. That's okay. Maybe tomorrow or the night after. So yeah, uh, thanks everyone, you know, for watching, commenting, and lurking. Appreciate it, you know, very, very much. Again, I will be back at about 6 o'clock tomorrow night for some more Grisaya. So, yeah, I hope everyone has a great uh, rest of their night. I'll see you next time.